Hello TypeScript fans! In this video I want to introduce you to the overrides property in package.json files and how it is being used um, by npm to override dependencies of dependencies. And to demonstrate it I have also quite a nice practical example. So first um, let me remove here the overrides property and then let me introduce you to the real world example that I brought with me today. There is this dependency resume CLI that I have here in this package. And when I install it, it will also install dependencies itself, yeah, dependencies that it is based on. And one of these dependencies will be Puppeteer. And Puppeteer is an API to control um, a headless Chrome browser over the DevTools. And this API, this Puppeteer, like uh, is being used then in order to run a Chrome behind the scenes and use, um, using the PDF export functionality of Chrome in order to generate a PDF file um, for a resume. Yeah, and that's um, quite cool, but also something that has a bug. And before showing you the bug, I want to first of all show you resume CLI. And Resume uh, CLI is actually um, a tool for this project called JSON Resume, which is super, super nice because as a developer, I don't like to write CVs. I like to write code. And JSON Resume um, gives me exactly that. I can write code that then generates my CV. Yeah, so instead of writing the CV, I can just code, which is super cool. And if we look at the getting starting section, we can see that we just need to install Resume CLI in order to get there. And then we need to uh, just create a resume JSON file with all our like um, achievements. And then we can run the resume uh, command from the resume CLI in order to export our resume in a PDF format or HTML website. There's also an example here. So thanks to Thomas Davis, we get a JSON file that we can try out. I downloaded this one, so it's uh, this here. Thank you, Thomas. And the idea is now to get a PDF file from that JSON. This is again uh, being done by using Puppeteer behind the scenes. Puppeteer runs a Chrome that then um, prints a PDF file, which will be our resume. So far, so good. Let's uh, see how this works in action. We um, first of all need to install the dependencies. We can do that by running npm install or npm i as a short uh, command. And that will then um, install resume CLI and all its dependencies. Um, by the way, dependencies of a dependency are called transitive dependencies yeah, because we get them like um, implicitly. And we also see here that uh, we get, for example, deprecation warnings. So there's Puppeteer version 16 inside of resume CLI and this one is no longer supported. And we will also get to see what's uh, the problem with it in a bit. Um, let's just wait for it to uh, finish the installation. So installation done now. We will have um, plenty of uh, node modules now, yeah, because there are a lot of dependencies and um, sub-dependencies, uh, aka um, transitive dependencies. And the one that we initially installed um, was uh, resume CLI, this one here. And if we look into its package JSON, we see that it brings um, a lot of other dependencies with it. And um, all of these dependencies we see here, for example, Puppeteer, are then like being installed in here. And we see Puppeteer version 16.1.0. Um, there's also that uh, carrot here, which means that we will get the latest minor version of version 16. If we look into, for example, the Puppeteer directory, let me just find it here and we look into its package JSON. Then we see that it installed 16.2. Yeah, because uh, here it said uh, 16.1, but uh, with a caret, meaning the latest um, minor version of uh, major version 16, which uh, by the time here is 16.2. So we have Puppet here now in our project. How? Can we figure that out without looking into all the directories inside of node modules? Well, there are multiple options. Um, we can use, for example, the npm list command. Um, pm list. 
that will also tell us our dependencies and there is just one, but it also has the possibility to show dependencies of dependencies, yeah, so-called dependency graph. And we get that by specifying a depth of this graph, for example, depth one, and then we will see dependencies of our dependency. So here, resume CLI, and then we will get to see uh, Puppet here. Yeah, so this here uh, actually um, resembles what we've seen already here Yeah, with uh, async, browser sync, all of these dependencies we can see here now. We can go even further and list um, then also the dependencies of these dependencies. Yeah, that's what we get, for example, with depth two. And then we see it gets already like much bigger. And if we want to see everything, then we can just use um, the all flag here. And with the all flag, we get to see the whole dependency tree, which is super big. So this is just for an explanation. If we also um, know already um, about a certain dependency, let's say we go here into the node modules and um, we found there somewhere Puppeteer, we can also say, okay, npm ls uh, Puppeteer, and then it will tell us which Puppeteer version we have. And it will tell us, okay, we have uh, 16.2 and it also shows us the, the tree up until Puppeteer, yeah, from Resume CLI directly to Puppeteer. We can also do it bottom up. Yeah, we can also uh, check from the point of Puppeteer where it came from. Um, this uh, works by using npm explain. So I can write npm explain Puppeteer and then I get to see that Puppeteer comes from Resume CLI and Resume CLI um, was defined in the root project, which is this one here. Yeah, this is um, what we will get to see with npm explain. And there's an alias for it um, because um, when you are using, for example, yarn, then um, the command for it that is similar would be y. So uh, npm has an alias for that. You can also say npm y puppeteer and you will get to see the same. That's uh, super cool. So let us now check what happens um, when we generate um, a PDF file. I will go back here to my scripts and uh, I will run the export script by hovering over it. I can click on run script. It will run it and um, it will generate a resume PDF here. And then we get to see um, the resume of uh, Thomas uh, Davis. And we get to see here already uh, an issue. We get to see that, um, for example, the text is um, not super nicely displayed. Yeah, it's uh, directly in, on a page break. And instead of being written on the uh, beginning of the next page, it's here like in between. And that doesn't look nice. This is actually a bug of um, using an older Puppeteer version. So um, ideally we can fix it by using uh, a newer Puppeteer version. Yeah, somewhere in here, Puppeteer, yeah, we want to upgrade this version. Of course, if we would be very nice uh, to the community, we would go into this um, repository here. Yeah, we would find the original code and we will send a pull request and fix it in here. But if we um, are not owning that repository, it can take a while until it's integrated. So that's why it's a good opportunity to us um, to just update it in our own local project. And now comes the deal. Now we can use the overrides property. Yeah, we can specify here that we want to override the Puppeteer version. Um, overrides, if I hover over it, um, tells us that it um, is uh, supporting us in overriding the uh, version that is being selected. And um, if you would use yarn, you would uh, use resolutions, but uh, we will use here overrides because we are on NPM. Let me actually check with uh, the NPM version that I have, NPM version 10A2. And um, in NPM, it works the following way. I specify overrides, then I specify the package, uh, which um, dependency I want to overwrite. In our case, that's resume CLI. So from resume CLI, I want to overwrite the, um, the Puppeteer version. Puppeteer, I hope this is uh, correctly uh, written. And then I want to use a more recent version, let's say um, the latest um, 24, yeah, like this. All right, now I will run npm install to see what will happen. 
And to uh, get a better overview, I will just close all the other tabs here. I will like um, uh, make the node modules directly a bit smaller. And uh, yeah, now I run npm install. And uh, I will run npm y and then puppeteer to figure out which puppeteer is now installed. And I will get to see that um, there is a version 24 now. If I open node modules and bin, I will also see that there is um, a binary here for Puppeteer. So I can execute this one using npx and then Puppeteer. And uh, then I can also ask it for its version, dash dash version. And I will also get to see that I have now version 24. So the um, overwrite um, worked. I can verify that by going into the package log. This uh, is uh, what you uh, should always do. Yeah, verify what is written in the package log file because this really logs the version to a specific one. And if I look inside here, I will get to see that um, there are some references to Puppet here and uh, version 24 is also specified here. If you encounter that this is not the case, yeah? If I would see that there's version 16 here, although I specified the override and I ran npm install, then you can force an update by running npm update because this will then actually also update your package log file based on um, the tilde the symbols and caret symbols that you use. So it will then also um, um, respect the version ranges and update your package log file accordingly to reflect the latest uh, version ranges. Yeah, I'm just uh, showing you that. Um, so npm update will also then um, go and update the package log. So we um, are sure now we have a more recent Puppeteer version. Let's see how this um, looks then in, in our use case. If I run the uh, export script again, then uh, a new PDF will be generated using a newer version of Puppeteer. So this uh, uh, has uh, succeeded now. And if I look into the PDF file and I scroll down, I will see that highlights is now written on the second page. Yeah, the page break is uh, perfectly uh, done here. And um, the CV looks now much more organized. Cool. Um, I'm very happy that I found that real world example, yeah, because most of the times um, there are these features, but then if you don't have a real example for it, it's hard to get when to use them. Here in our case, we saw when it's good to use them, it's good to use them when we have a dependency that is not in our control. And when we know that this dependency has some um, dependencies that uh, are vulnerable um, or issue some warnings or have some defects, yeah, if that's the case, and if the version ranges of this um, dependency don't allow major upgrades, yeah, because for example, with um, such uh, tilde and caret, I have also a video for this, you can check it out by the way. Um, if the version ranges also don't allow you to upgrade this, um, for example, if you run npm update and uh, it's not updating to the latest major that you would need, then it's a good way to use the overrides. But be very careful with it because they can also create side effects. For example, here I'm overwriting um, version 16 to version 24. So it's a huge jump in uh, terms of major versions. And every major version usually also has some breaking changes. And that could mean that then some functionality that was working before is not working because it's not compatible. In our case, we've been lucky because in our case, it was actually solving an issue, but there can be other cases where it may not solve issues, but um, create more. So be careful with it, but also be aware that this is an opportunity for you.